Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Walking and Talking. This is episode 22. Big shout out to all the Eagle Scouts. There have been several of those plaques I've noticed around um, for maintaining, repairing, and replacing various structures and keeping these trails beautiful. Uh, big thumbs up. I'm an Eagle Scout myself. Huge props. Good people doing good work. Um, so, with that out of the way, let's get into today's topic, which is compression. What is compression when it relates to video and audio? Uh, what compression is, is uh, taking a big file and just like squeezing a sponge and the water coming out, you're basically using math and algorithms to squeeze all the water, in this case, squeeze the information down to make a giant file smaller. The reason you'd want to do that is it takes up less storage space on your hard drive and is easier to stream through the internet. So watching a YouTube video, there's a huge amount of compression and math going on in the background to make the video come out of your computer screen in the fastest, best way possible. Because if you were trying to stream, say, uncompressed video, you'd need a connection that was faster than anything you can get uh, aside from like a business or government like direct connection to the backbone of the internet it just doesn't work that well so now that you know why you need compression let's talk about how compression works and <laughs> this is all coming to the point at why the recent game of thrones episode that aired last sunday was a little rough um, and hard to see in a lot of places so when you compress something what it usually does is take chunks out of the top and bottom. So it takes the highs and takes the lows. When you're talking about audio, that's the bass notes and the treble notes. When you're doing, uh, go back, listen to like, early rap is great. Like again, we're in Shaolin. So go back, listen to some Wu-Tang Clan, listen to some Sugar Hill Gang, listen to Rage Against the Machine because they tend to master their audio at extreme fidelity. Uh, or go and see any of Trent Reznor's work, especially if you can get a hold of the FLAC files. It's .flac. They're a little hard to play, they're a little hard to find, they're a little enormous, they're like 10, 15 gigabytes for a song, but when you listen to it on a nice, nice pair of headphones, or you listen to it through a really nice set of speakers, you'll hear things you never heard before. Like, you'll hear low notes that you may not have heard on your standard set of like, earbuds or heard on your like desktop computer speakers that maybe aren't of a high quality or laptop speakers god forbid no offense i'm a bit of an audio uh file so i love this stuff um and so when you compress it it takes those mids those highs and some of the non-essential information away and will attempt to add it back in during playback that's why way back in the day you have all these issues with what's called codecs and they are compression uh, methods. So that way when you uncompress the file, when you're playing it back, it knows where to add bits and bobs that back in that were cut out in the compression. Sorry if that was confusing. Um, tried to narrow it down as much as possible, but that's what it does for audio. When we're talking about video, the highs are gonna be the extreme brights. So, uh, white and moving down into like very bright high color and then at the lows there you're gonna have black gray and then the scale all the way in between it's any really dark dark colors and when you compress it those two ends of the spectrum tend to get uh, I don't know they, they can tend to distort a little bit if your compression is bad um, under bad compression, you'll start to see what's called, uh, some people call it banding, um, but you'll see like, in like a black scene, you'll almost see just steps. So instead of a smooth gradient, transitioning from like completely black to gray, then to light, it'll be like black, gray section, lighter gray section, lighter gray section, and then the light. So it'll still look, the image will still look crisp-ish, but there is missing information there that prevents it from looking smooth. And when you're trimming out a lot of that, uh, when you're compressing down video, 
a lot of times you can lose information that is in those darker parts of the scene. So say when you see dragons flying at night, you will not be able to say discern the tips of their wings from the darkness that is the background at night. This can create a whole mess of problems, uh, many of which were visible in that recent Game of Thrones episode. There's a little hole there. I assume a gopher lives in it. Um, and can make things just harder to see and understand. Um, especially when you're moving around quickly, uh, these problems can be extremely exacerbated. Um, and make scenes not only hard to watch, but hard to understand. And that's really what the biggest issue was with this recent episode, is it was just harder to, to really get into it because the darkness and the, um, not blurriness, because it's not blurry, but that um, compression artifacting and low bitrate caused the episode to be worse, visually worse exactly how to throw it out there. The second part of that is bitrate. So it's not only compression that causes that loss of information, it's the bitrate that a video is um, compressed into and the bitrate, yes, <laughs> the bitrate used for compression and the bitrate used for transmission also greatly affect the overall quality product. So when we're talking about 4K, an average bid rate for one of the common compressions, which is 8.264, if you don't understand that, it's not a problem, it's not a big deal. For video people, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, for 4K in H.264, you need about 45 plus uh, bits per second. Really, it's better to be closer to 100. When you look at a Blu-ray, they're up in that 100 number. So the amount of information coming from your Blu-ray player to your TV to display the image is 100 megabits per second. So every second is 100 megabits. <laughs> when you look at things like HBO Now, that bitrate may be closer to 10 or 12. And same goes for the stream that's coming from your TV uh, provider like Dish, DirecTV, Comcast, etc. That 11 megabit per second video, most of them being 1080i or less, can tend to muddy the blacks, can tend to muddy the whites, and it just, it ruins the picture, and any detail that is in a dark scene tends to get lost. Between the bitrate and compression, <laughs> this recent Game of Thrones episode, uh, kind of was ruined a little bit. And I think that's a problem for Game of Thrones fans because this episode was a pretty big deal and those deers over there. Um, yeah, so that's really all that there is about compression and bitrate. The short answer is some of the new compression tech, like YouTube now uses H.265, which is what this video is done in at I think I do it about 16 uh, megabits per second. H.265 is a much more um, efficient compression method. It does a lot better job of maintaining quality and creating a smaller file size. So where you would have needed a higher bit rate for 4K video, this video doesn't need that because it uses H.265 instead of H.264. So if you go back Watch some of the content that HBO put onto YouTube, uh, especially like the making of content from the recent Game of Thrones episodes. You'll see some of it looks better than, and more watchable than it was in the episode that aired on Sunday. The reason being, YouTube uses a higher, higher uh, bit rate, better compression using that H.265, netting you a better overall image. So. What we've learned is when the Blu-rays come out, that episode will look a lot better because the compression is more efficient and the bitrate is higher. And it's kind of a shame. And it's kind of why I'm, I don't wanna say I'm over TV, but I don't think TV is the best way to send video anymore. And also I really think that all of the major content providers 
should really strongly considering consider switching to HL265 because I think it's better. I know it's not perfect. I know you have to change your workflow a little bit, but better content means more engagement, means more return. What is there to lose? So with that, I'm gonna get back to my walk. So I'm gonna stop ranting. Um, also, if you need something or want something to entertain yourself, go out and look up more videos on compression and on bitrate. There's a ton of information out there, and if you're into video or audio, highly recommended learning more about that because it is extremely important to know. And yeah. So oh, also, go check out those songs I was talking about. Check out Flack Audio. Really good. With that, thank you all for joining me. Catch you in tomorrow's episode. Peace. Bye. Quick update. As you saw a second ago, there's a ton of deer. As you can see from the pond and this kind of thin area over here, it's all super green and all the dead area around here. Deer overpopulation and overgrazing is a real problem on Staten Island. And somebody's got to figure out a solution. So it's a real complicated issue because you can't hunt on Staten Island because there's too many people and you just end up injuring somebody and there's no natural predators. And I don't see any reason why people would want to introduce a natural predator like a wolf into Staten Island to help control the deer population. So it's a bit of a conundrum. Deer castration, bat birth control. <laughs> Sorry, office reference. That's off of this little weird mini update additional bonus video. Catch y'all tomorrow. Bye.